Oh, it's you cold me. reading from the word go. Uh, there are some directors that will let you see a script ahead of time, <clears throat> but that's one of the things that you learn in theater that pays off so well as a voice actor. You see the script, and moments later you're recording it. And that's not to say we fly by the seat of our pants. That's why we depend on our and on our directors uh, to steer us in the right direction because the director has seen the whole product and they know where our voice is supposed to be. But yeah, the, the thing that I, I think a lot of people don't know is that we're seeing the script for the first time the day we walk in to record. And that's pretty scary for some roles. There, there, are, some, there are some times when you can do research on a show or something like that. Uh, anytime, a lot of times when I get cast, I try to look into as much about the show as I can. Uh, you know, there are certainly fan sites for the show where they talk about the characters. You can find uh, the, the sites in Japan where they have character designs and stuff like that. Uh, there are other times when, uh, like in the case of Speed Graffer and Gantz, the director said, please do not do any research on this show. We don't want you to know anything about it prior to each thing that you record. With Gantz, it was because Matt wanted an absolute shock. Uh, he wanted the reactions really fresh. With Bevins, it was for a completely, uh, completely different, very character-driven reason. And in that case, like Greg said, you have to rely on your director, and you have to rely on Trust them. your uh, your instincts as an actor and your ability to cold read. You know. Um, when I first started with New Generation Pictures, when I was playing a bigger role, Jonathan would give me the script for the volume that we were going to record, <coughs> and the Japanese version of the show, and I would get to watch just those four episodes maybe a few days before we recorded. Um, and I liked that depending on the emotions that the character went through, because I got kind of got to, yeah, know what they were going to go through. And I also brought my theater background into it, where I, I would write diaries for the characters and, and, and do a lot of character development. You don't only, you usually don't get to do that, though that was unusual. You usually don't get to do that. It's, it's like Greg and Chris said, you, you rely on the director. Um, but I think most of us, once we've been doing the character, though, probably have a line, and I forget what you call that. A reference line. A reference line that you have in your head that you all you have to do is say that line and you're there sometimes. That comes from, usually you don't develop that though until you've done the character for a little while. Um, I, I tell you my favorite reference line that anybody I've ever worked with at Funimation ever had. Um, Chuck Huber plays uh, numerous things, but he played Emperor Pilaf on Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. And it's just this crazy boy out of the head. But to get into character, he reminded himself, he's like, oh, it's like Edith Bunker. So every time I watch it, And then we were there. I'll watch it. Yeah, it's just like you. Yeah. <laughs> For Mokina, for Black Mokina, all I do is say sake in Mokina's voice. <laughs> and that's it. That's all it takes. Pretend I'm a drunk creature. <laughs> Have you had any funnier, awkward moments in recording some of your more recent shows? Never. Or anything to do with recent I have had some really, really awkward moments recording the newest show that I'm working on, but I cannot talk about that show. But it's very awkward. <laughs> uh, and when you hear about it, you'll know why I said that. Yeah, I can't really say the actual words that we were using during the session, but uh, my most recent <laughs> Shin-Chan session, <laughs> the thing is with that show, you, you have to say things that maybe you wouldn't normally say. And, um, Oh, and to fit the lip flap, we'll sit there and debate something really, really disgusting and inappropriate, and invariably somebody will walk in. <laughs> or, you know, and we'll be talking about butts or, it, well, and much, much worse things. Yeah. So, yeah, it was pretty embarrassing. The most recent one was pretty bad. Yeah, I'm, I'm a flailer. I tend to fall over in the booth. Um, <laughs> I do. I was working on uh, Papua. And in order to get the voice, sometimes you, you have to adjust your body sometimes with the character. And I don't record sitting down, I stand up the whole time. And my body, when I when I record Osho or Shodanai, 
uh, and my body goes into this whole Joe Cocker spasming thing. <laughs> and uh, I fell over much more than once in the movie. <laughs> I was uh, recording on Morabito as I did a bunch of various characters, but one was like this undersea creature who talks in this alien language. So the director goes, just babble, right? This line, and it's broken down, we record line by line. So one line was like, okay, we need 13 seconds of babble. It's like, you're gonna give me any sort of reference? Like, no, just <laughs> And they recorded it and they pitched it up in the uh, recording of Pro Tools. It's like, that was really strange. I just said, I just babbled. It was bizarre. This is for Greg. Uh, do you find it a little troubling that you have to change dialogue so much when you did ghost stories? Because it went from normal to so much dirt. No, I thought it was awesome. I hope we find another horrible piece of trash show that we can do that to. <laughs> Um, and here's the thing, for those of y'all that haven't seen Ghost Story, uh, it, it's, it's really funny. And uh, I don't think Christian Slater finds that show very funny. But uh, uh, the thing was, we were given a show, uh, ADV acquired the rights to a show, and, and the way licensing happens, sometimes we get a show as a result of licensing another show. Um, this wasn't one of those cases, this was a show that we got for almost nothing. Uh, and the Japanese really wanted to see a second return on the show because they had not made the first return in Japan very well. Um, it was a show that was never meant for little kids, but it kind of got pushed into a kiddie time slot on television. And it was like a bad Scooby-Doo, basically. Only a really bad Scooby-Doo. The characters were boring and the show was not interesting. Um, and so ADV was told, even by the Japanese, look, this show didn't do so good. See what you can do to beef it up. And um, they brought Stephen Foster in on the project, and he decided that he was going to get a cast of heavy hitters from ADV, and we were going to improvise the show. Um, and by improvise, it doesn't mean we made it up like what you're hearing was the first run, but we wrote the show as we went along. And um, we only had a few rules. We couldn't change any character names. Um, the ghosts had to die the same way they died in the real sto story. And the ghosts had to keep their and retain their original names and their original intent because they're based on Chinese and Japanese ghosts. Um, other than that, we could say whatever we wanted. And the funny thing is, um, that is considered heresy. Like that is that is sacrilege in the anime community. Like how dare you change anything the Japanese have done? But one by one, all the people that were like, well, I think you should have had it in the original Japanese language. People that have tried to watch that show subtitled in its original language have all come back and said, oh, that show sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and so, <clears throat> so why not? Why not take a show that's not so good and have fun with it? The crazy thing is, that year in Anime Insider, we beat Alchemist for Dub of the Year. Just because it was the little show that could. <laughs> I mean, that's not, that's not bagging on Alchemist, that's saying a little show that was nothing at one point beat a huge show in an awards deal just because it had the bravery to be original. And, uh, and yes, it was my idea to pick on Christian Slater. I just wish, my only wish is that uh, we would have found out what a Jew hater Mel Gibson was before that show. Because, uh, y'all don't know, my little char my character Leo is Jewish, and uh, he gets bagged on it by the whole show. And I was like, oh, if Mel Gibson would have only lost his mind a few months earlier. Had a, a field day with him. But uh, I, I hope that that happens again because we still have Tom Cruise and uh, <laughs> yeah, these other people to take a swing at.